Hey, what's up guys? It's Fruity. We're getting back to the no spin challenge run of the original Crash Bandicoot. Man, I'm hyped to be back here again. In the previous episode, we took on the first three levels, and Sandy Beach, Jungle Rollers, and the Great Gate. In this episode, we're going to take on boulders. Uh, just addressing a couple of the recording issues I had back in part one. Uh, yeah, I had an echo on my voice. That should be fixed now. Uh, don't don't worry about the cause of that. That, that was really stupid. <laughs> that should be uh, fixed now. Uh, as for my recorder um, that's like lingering on loading screens for a few seconds, I'm not sure what's up with that. We'll see if it happens again. But what I'm going to do is just not do anything um, for a few seconds after I spawn so you don't miss any of the action. Um, otherwise, I'm not too sure what I can do about that. <laughs> it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. Just, you know, be careful about that, I suppose. Anyway, moving on to... A very iconic level, Boulders, um, and it's sequel later, but we'll get to that when we get to that. This level's pretty well known, as I said, uh, EB Games posted a video about it. Um, or it might have been a GIF. Uh, wait, did I spin? Oh no, don't tell me I spun. I think I did. Wait, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm just gonna exit to the map anyway. Just, just, just in case, you know, if I act, if I spin when I'm not supposed to, you know, reset level, basically. I think I did spin. Yeah, there was a box here at the start of the level. I'm pretty sure I spun that. I need to get out of the habit of spinning. I'm, I'm too used to spinning in Crash games. Oh, man. You have to spin to get these boxes here. Yeah. Already reached an impasse. That will have to be something I take care of later, because... Um... As I said, I gotta do the least amount of spins possible to beat the game. And then I'll come back later and do the least amount possible to 100% the game. So I will spin on that occasion to break those boxes. Not right now. Uh, it's not a very time consuming level to backtrack to anyway. I've, I've not even made mention of the, the gimmick here. Yes, we've been chased by a boulder. Yes, it is scary, okay? Uh, I'm gonna ignore these boxes here because they're difficult to get without spinning, and I don't have to, because I can't break all of the boxes in this level anyway, as we've established. I mean, I could have tried for them anyway, you know, break the most amount of boxes you possibly can without spinning, even on the first visit, but, nah, I have actually attempted this level before without spinning, just because I knew these boxes would be stupid ridiculous, and it's not easy. It's exhilarating and fun, but, uh, not easy. Um, anyway... This boulder always stays very close behind you, never let go of the forward, the forward button, but otherwise it's not too bad. It's probably the easiest level in the game, really, to be honest. <laughs> but, um, unfortunately, we missed 10 boxes. It's a bit of a shame, bit of a shame that, so, getting back to the map screen. <laughs> A uh, little bit of a dull level, to be honest. A bit too short, bit too easy, like I said, you know. Um, but anyways, we'll be heading into a bit of a final level now, upstream. This is a cool level, I like this one. Can't get a gem here yet, need another colored gem for it. There's no skip for this one, actually. Um, I believe it's possible to do in Taz Tool Assisted Speedrun. Um, you can get the gem here without its specific colored gem that you need. But not in, like, real time. Way too hard. Um... So this is the first level in the game you have to backtrack to in 100% runs or, uh, every single time you play the game, no matter what you do. Anyway, there's a hidden box back there, Nakuaku. Sometimes it spawns you with the camera so you can see that box, and sometimes it doesn't. I'm not sure exactly what controls that. I think it's random. I th if you hold back on the control pad, I think it, it might always spawn it so you see it, but or spawn you so you see it, but I'm not sure. Anyways, these fishies. I don't think you can kill those fishies by jumping on them. I think you have to spin them. They're not too hard to avoid anyway, so what do I care? <laughs> Checkpoint. Anyway, yeah, these are river levels. Don't jump in the water. It kills you instantly. <laughs> Crash can't swim, okay? He's never learned how to swim. I mean, he's, he's a freaking bandicoot, and he only just got mutated. He's been living like a natural bandicoot his entire life at this point, which means he's been living like on land. He does he never goes in the water. How is he supposed to know how to swim? <laughs> uh... <laughs> Is there even any Crash game where you swim? Yeah, oh, pff, what am I saying? There's underwater levels in uh, Crash 3 and uh, Wrath of Cortex. I don't know, maybe, maybe some of the other later games. I can't, I can't recall any off the top of my head. Anyway, 
Alright, we have a vulnerability now. Cool. Oh, there's the first gem root. This level actually is two gem roots, which is uh, pretty unique. I think there's only a couple of levels in the game which have two gem roots. Anyways, this is our third Torna token heading into the bonus round. So, uh, this bonus round is, uh, you know, a little bit of fun. It's, uh, it's not too hard. I might make it imp- Yeah, I could make this impossible to complete if I'm not careful. But, looks like I've got it. Because otherwise I'd have to spin boxes so I could get on top of those stacks. But anyways, that's all the boxes broken without spinning, so hooray. Again, you don't have to break all the boxes in the bonus round for the gem. I'm just doing it for, you know, completionist sake. Well, it's not even really completionist sake, because you don't even need to do it for 100%. I'm like... 100 plus percent completionist. <laughs> uh, just going that extra mile. Alright, we're really close to the end now, though. It's really short level, again. It's even shorter than Boulder's, actually. I know this, because, again, I have started speedrunning this game. Uh, Boulder's usually takes me 90 seconds, and Upstream usually takes 74, 75, roughly. Anyway, three boxes, yep. A measly three boxes that you, uh, can't get yet without the specific color gem, the orange gem, as I'm sure you may have seen. But anyways, we're heading into the sixth level, but this isn't actually the sixth level, this is actually the first boss, Papu Papu. He's a bit of a joke, he's uh, generally known as a bit of, bit of a joke, he's, uh, he's not hard, he's basically the, the big fat tribal leader of all the, uh, tribal uh, people we've been seeing so far, all the jaws and stuff. He's an extremely easy boss. Jump on his head whenever he whacks his mallet on the ground. Then he'll uh, whirl around like this a bit, knock his mallet on the ground and uh, hit him again. Then he'll do it, do that a third time. And then just a minute, wait for it. Should do it now. Ah, there we go, first boss of the game done. <laughs> this game is not known for hard bosses. And then Crash does big cool yeah, and we're done. Um, bit of a shame how easy that boss is, because uh, the music that plays during that boss only plays there. It doesn't play anywhere else in the game. You, you don't even get to hear the whole song. Like, like it's like a 90 second song or something. It was actually pretty damn good. Uh, I'll, I'll say that. It's actually pretty damn good, but don't get to hear all of it most of the time, <laughs> which is a bit of a shame. Uh, he, Papa Papa is a bit harder in the Japanese version. He has 5 HP. In, in that version. So, oh no, I just goofed. I just goofed, I think. Can you even, oh no. I think I have to reset, I think I have to reset boys. Unless, is there a way we can get up? Cause I know you can jump on top of the uh, plant to break these boxes without spinning. I wasn't thinking, I was too busy talking about Papu's music. <laughs> Alright, I think we done goofed. <laughs> Back to the map. <laughs> Back to the map, boys. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, that's a bit of a, a funny thing that's happened. Uh, one of the first, like, <laughs> really funny fails I've had at the, so far. <laughs> Damn, that's uh, pretty awful. We actually can't get the gem in this level either, but I actually need it to progress. I... That just happened, didn't it? Just, that just happened. I just failed. Yep. All right. Well, then, <laughs> back, back to the map again. <laughs> oh god, I feel so helpless. I honestly feel so helpless. This is so bad. Like, like, oh my goodness. Uh, Rolling Stones, why you do this? <laughs> Jeez. All right, this time let's not fail. <clears throat> all right, all right. I got one. I got one. We got this. Done it. Done did it. <laughs> Alright, now we're going to actually talk about the level. The second, uh, well, Rolling Stone level of the game. Got the big, or well, Jungle Rollers. I, I don't know, both levels are named after these things. And both of them give appropriate names to call them. So I don't know what to call them. Are they called Jungle Rollers or are they called Rolling Stones? What, what's it called? Anyway, can't break this without spinning. So, And I can't get the gem here yet, so we're moving on. I won't spin there. Um... We got our first Brio token back there, so there are other bonus rounds besides the Torna bonus rounds. There are Brio ones as well. Uh, Brio being um, 
the secondary antagonist after Dr. Cortex. Dr. Cortex is an uh, evil assistant. And his bonus rounds, if you beat them, uh, they don't let you save the game. And they don't give you anything. They're just there to give you extra lives. Usually there's some lives at the end. They're like the hardest things to complete in this entire game. But you don't have to complete them for 100%. I will complete all of them anyway, you know, again, my, my completionist. Hopefully you don't have to use the spin in any of them. I think you do have to spin in one of them. I think just one in order to beat it. There's four Bria bonuses in the game, and I think three of them you can beat without spinning. We'll see what happens. Anyways, oh yeah, another thing, the, uh, just names the level, obviously reference to a, a particular, uh, musical ensemble, uh, that happens to be called, uh, the Rolling Stones, uh, <laughs> pretty obvious reference. So this level isn't even a pun on, like, English or anything, like, just, like, synonyms or words and stuff, it's just a reference to a band. Anyways, we're in the Torna bonus now, uh, yeah, I don't think we'll need to spin at all for this one. I think we might be able to break all the boxes too without spinning, which is nice. Oh yeah, we can break all these boxes. That's nice. I like that. Okay, now this bit. Oh yeah. It's always great if you can get in the middle of these. Oh. Yeah. Really satisfying. <laughs> They're so close together. Oh, he's 14% complete. Really flying through the game. But we're not really, like, 14% down. Like, we still gotta go back, do all the gems and stuff. The gems are only worth 1% each, even though there's, like, only 26 of them. So, they're actually... They, they should be worth more than 1%. Like, they take... They're most of the work. Getting the 26 gems, that's most of the work of this game. In terms of 100%. Like, really. Obviously, they just give you a ton of percentage for beating levels to make you feel good. Mm. Make people feel good who don't want to do 100% in this game. 100%, mm. you can't play a crash game without 100%ing it. Not 100%ing it, ain't even beating it. Jeez. Not in my eyes, anyway. Well, probably Crash 2 and 3 more so than this game. This game, yeah, it's 100%. Doesn't add that much extra content going for 100% in this game, and it's hard but I'd still get angry if people don't rise to the challenge you need to rise to the challenge anyway here's the first real bonus obviously they have a different aesthetic this is a pretty cool mine aesthetic with some green looking crystals here maybe a bit of a foreshadowing of the purple crystals you'll collect in crash 2 onwards anyways not as cool looking as the Torna bonus round but still pretty cool and this as you can see they're harder I had to do some pretty crazy looking... Oh no. Oh, wait a minute. I think... Yeah, I think it's two ways doing this. I could have jumped on that life crate and gone over here. But that would have resulted in me not breaking quite as many boxes as the other strategy you can use to get past this without spinning. Now this strategy... Is this! <laughs> and I'm, it's gonna scare the absolute... Oh my god, I'm so terrified. Oh, oh no! Oh, oh, oh! That was terrible. We'll have to come back to that later. I have to revisit this level anyway. We'll, we'll have to do it again. I was so close. I got three of them. I got three of those crazy jumps, and then I had to go and fail the last one, didn't I? Damn it! That was so bad. That was so close to the end too. Man, eight boxes. Um, there's six you can't get without the particular color gem for this level, the blue gem, but obviously two of them I don't think I could break without spinning. It must have been those bouncy ones. Oh, heading back to the map. I think we've got time for one more level, particularly considering the next level is a, a very short. It takes 89 seconds exactly. How do I know this? Well, I speedrun the game, and it's an auto-scroll level, so of course I know how long it takes. Uh, Hog Wild, fun level, not a big fan of the gimmick, not a big fan, but, you know, it's, uh, it's another one of those memorable levels because of its, uh, pretty big gimmick, just like the boulder levels. So, basically, you're riding a hog through the tribal village, and, uh, man, it's, uh, pretty wild. 
So this is a level where the no spin run has no effect whatsoever. This works the same as it always does because there is no spinning in this level at all. So uh, this obviously obviously isn't going to be a greater challenge for me than it usually is. Like, you know. So pretty boring level in the context of the no spin run. But hey, I guess just as a level, pretty cool to watch. So obviously watched out for these spike poles here, you don't want to touch them like the ones in uh, the Great Gate, they'll just kill you. I do not believe you can bring Aku Aku into these levels. I believe one hit kill all the way, no, no way of avoiding one hit kills. So that makes them, I guess, a little harder than what they would be otherwise, but eh, still, these levels aren't too hard, and uh, we're right at the end already, see? <laughs> pretty short, pretty simple. Always stick to the right at the end of there. That last uh, Joel there at the end, it's pretty tough to judge what side you can go on. I know from experience and watching other people playing this game, it's very, very hard to judge what side you should go on. It's the right side, always the right side. It always, it always works if you go on the right, so don't worry about it if you just... Remember that tip for the last guy, the last Joel in Hogwild. Anyway, our second gem, yes, this is, um, yeah, we're, we're well on our way. Two out of 26 gems, yeah, amazing. We're, we're really rocketing through the game now. We're only 24 to go, that's not many. Oh, dear. Uh, but, uh, yep, uh, as expected, simple, easy level, because there's no difference at all in a no-spin run, it's just a regular run. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> The next time things should spice up a little bit more, because we'll be heading into Native Fortress, the final level of the first island, and uh, the toughest level too, of course. And the best level. I, I, I like them tough, I like them long, like them tough. Very fun, very good level, Native Fortress, but we'll save that for next time. We'll keep keep the hype train going, getting hyped for a Native Fortress next time. Already got two gems, beaten seven regular levels and a boss. Uh, we're really getting into things now. I will catch you guys next time. This is Free signing out.